uh, he didn't talk much about health, about bodily health, of course. But he did uh, made many references in his letters, and he also cautioned his devotees, <coughs> and also he advised his devotees to keep their health nicely, uh, so that they can do service of Krishna nicely and. In fact, on practical basis, I've, I've traveled all around the world and I've met many devotees, many sannyasis, and many of them are unhealthy. <laughs> so, and it, it actually obstructs your devotion. It obstructs your devotion. That's why Krishna also says in Bhagavad Gita, Yukta har vihara sicha, yukta chesta sakarma sau, yukta sapna bodha se yoga bhakti dukha ha. He says in sixth chapter, that if you want, uh, if you want to be free of sufferings, uh, balance and regulate your sleep, right? Yukta ahar, eating, and vihar means exercises and your activities, and then you can be very healthy. Okay, so here I'm going to talk something about health. Uh, now you see, I'm, I'm not going to give you full Ayurvedic thing course i'm not going to do that because anyway it's not going to help you because uh, half knowledge is very dangerous so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you some principles which uh, which you can be you can be healthy some basic principles you see there are some principles in in devotion in health in ayurveda the the book anyway okay so before i give you principles what is a book we are referring to? Now all these principles of health, they are given in Vedas. And the section of Vedas which is dealing with health, it is called Ayurveda. So there are three, let's say, two main books of Ayurveda. That is Charak Samhita and the other is Shushrut Samhita. And, uh, but nobody reads Charak Samhita, by the way, now because it's very complex. Uh, uh, more than that, what people read is Bhagbhat. There's another Rishi, there's another Rishi in Bhagbhat who composed a book, Ashtang Hirdayam. People read that. How do I know these things? Because I was a doctor, uh, I was an allopathic doctor, but then I also did Ayurveda. So, and then afterwards, I did homeopathy. So, I know these things, that's why. And I thought I can help devotees. I don't give the seminars to non-devotees. I don't do that. Uh, but to devotees I give so that it, it, they can use their health in service of God. So that those books, what happened is these all these books, Charak and Bhagavad, these books are divided into two sections. Now the first section is talking about uh, preventive medicine. And the next section is talking about curative medicine. Cure. Now the whole point is what these books say that, that although there are medicines, uh, a curative medicine is dealing with medicines. Am, am I right? Curative medicines. Although there are medicines to treat yourself, uh, you, have, you might have so many diseases and you can treat it. But the whole point is why to become diseased at all? That's the whole point. So can you prevent diseases? Of course, if you if you talk of scripturally, birth that is old age, that's a part of life. <laughs> you can't help it out. But you can prevent them. You can prevent them as far as possible. Now there are some diseases which which uh, now now diseases also are divided into three parts. Now one part is one part is diseases which come. Uh, due to destiny that you can't avoid if it's written in your destiny it's written you can't avoid it some diseases uh, come due to accidents you might be traveling and you get an accident and then and then an accident uh, complicates into disease you had an accident you're in hospital and then you get hospital acquired pneumonia what do you do with that so that also you can't work it out anything but some diseases come due to out of our own foolishness. Because of foolishness, 
in not knowing the principles of eating, principles of exercise and principles of sleeping. That's what I'm going to talk now and the balance between them. So because of that and those diseases we can prevent, am I right? Those diseases we can prevent. Um, now, now, uh, now how, how much proportion of these diseases are there? I mean to say, there, there, there are three types of diseases. So how much proportion they, are, they contribute in our life? Now by destiny and by accident, these kind of diseases are like 20%, 15 to 20%. Rest 80% is due to our foolishness. So it's a big thing we are talking about. And that's why Ayurveda says the power of medicine is not in curative medicine, but is in preventive medicine. That's the power. That's the thing we are looking at. And that is why the first part is talking about preventive medicine. If you follow these principles, you will not need to go in the second part. You see? First part and the second part. So, oh, okay. Hey, I got it. If you require, you can get it. So, so like that. So the first part and the second part. So, uh, that's what we are talking, pre principles of prevention. Now, when we talk about principles of prevention, I am going to talk about three things now. Uh, the first is eating, and then it's principles of eating, then principles of sleeping, and then principles of exercise. And the fourth thing is balance between all these three. So we are talking about, we are looking at these things. Okay, so let's first start with eating. Because that's the most important activity we do in Krishna consciousness, isn't it? <laughs> that's all about, unfortunately, that's the thing that's happening. But uh, well, we should know something. Actually, it is said, uh, Prabhupada said in one of his conversations, I don't know, somewhere, it's just in joking, Prabhupada said, uh, I said, yogis die of fasting, devotees die of feasting. <laughs> so, so it's, it's, it's not, it's not, you see the point, it's not necessary that if food is there, you have to eat it. You have to keep in mind. I, I'll talk about this. But, uh, but we have to be careful because there's so much prasad and we don't know what to do and the only thing we know is put it in our mouth and put it, that's all. But that's not what we should do. So, okay, there are some principles of eating. Uh, it's not necessary if that's prasad, you have to eat it. It's prasad. You can honor it and you cannot eat it. Right? That, that's how you can do it. Uh, so, okay, what are the principles of eating? Now, the first principle of eating is... Uh, so I am going to tell you, so it, when, when, when you talk of principles, there are two types of principles. Some principles you can avoid. You can avoid them. But some principles are compulsory. You cannot avoid. You cannot neglect. If you neglect, you'll, you, will, you will have to face consequences. You will become diseased. So I am not going to ta tell you those principles which you can avoid. And you can adjust. I am going to first tell you those principles which you cannot avoid and you should not avoid. You should not break in the name of spirituality. And if you do that, you will become diseased. Now, suppose, suppose, suppose you are driving a car and... Okay, suppose you are driving a car and you don't apply brakes. What's going to happen? Accident, you show, sure? yeah. but you are a pure devotee. Well, even if you are a pure devotee, you will meet an accident, right? That's the same thing with this body. Body is a car, is a machine, and you are sitting in this body. So, if you don't apply the principles of this body, you can be pure devotee, but you are going to face serious problems in your health. That's all. It's simple as that. It's not that you are spiritual and this will help you to become healthy and not you will not become diseased. It's not going to be it's not going to do like that. Even even Srila Prabhupada he became diseased. Uh, uh, Prabhupada is of course transcendental, but uh, Prabhupada was getting up late at night. He was for he was pushing himself, and his health went down. We know on the ship in New York 
in LA, he had to come back to India because he was forcing his body. Of course, he was transcendental in the sense that when his body broke down, he was not disturbed. His mind was completely focused on Krishna, but it doesn't happen with us. If our health breaks down, our chanting will break down, that's all. Our devotion will break down, we'll just, we'll just become disturbed. Uh, health is the last thing we want to mess with. I mean to say, if, if you lose money, if you lose your family or something, you can go on. But if you lose your health, you will have it. You can't do devotion. That's that's the biggest thing. And that's why in Bible, oh, actually in Bible there is a, in Bible there is a section, Book of Job. And uh, and to make the story long, short, this this God wants wanted to test Job, how much, how great devotee he is. And, and he gave so many sufferings to him. His house got burned, his family died, and his business went wrecked and everything finished. And still he was a devotee. But then... But then God said, okay, this is the last test. And if he doesn't give up now, then this means he's a pure devotee. He's the best devotee. And he said, the last test is I will I will break down his health. When health goes down, then it's very difficult for any person to, to continue devotion. He might also continue devotion, but to continue devotion without complaining to God, without praying to him. That's the whole point there. So anyway, uh, let's not put God into that situation. If our health goes down, He has to look after us, am I right? That's why we keep our health. We maintain our health. Why? Because you see some devotees, they were telling, uh, by the way, before I talk about eating, some devotees, they tell, okay, well, you know, we should be dependent on Krishna. Krishna will maintain our health and our life. But that's a wrong thing to, to think. That's not devotion. That sense gratification. Because... Why should we give our master any worries? That's devotion. Uh, here we are as a servant to give our master some comfort and assistance. Not to become a burden on him. So it's, it's, it's this body we have to take care of. This body. Now this body belongs to God and that's why it is more important to take more care of it. It's a property of God. So, okay, so what about eating? Okay, let's, so eating, I'm going to tell you those principles which are absolutely necessary. Never, never, never break it. Uh, yeah, some devotee asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, uh, this, this Mangal Arati, do we have to do or not? Prabhupada says, you have to do Mangal Arati every day, wherever you are in the planet, doesn't matter. And Prabhupada says, is, the devotee just, Prabhupada, is there any condition where we can leave Mangal Arati? Papa says, there, there is one condition you can leave Mangalati when you are dead. <laughs> you have to do. You are in plane, you are anywhere, you must get up at that time and do Mangalati. I mean to say, if you are knocked out, that's another thing. <laughs> if you didn't sleep for four days and you are knocked out and you can't, and you don't know where, when to get up, you know, then you can't help it out. <laughs> but otherwise, you have to do Mangalati. That, that's, that's the whole point. I'm going to tell you rules which you have to follow. If you don't follow, at your own risk. You'll, you'll get sick. Okay, now let's talk about eating. The first rule in eating is... Um, the first rule in eating is... Never eat between... 10.30 uh, to... Let's say 10, 30, 11, 30, 12, 30, 12, 30, yeah. With, uh, uh, between 10, 30 to 2, 30. Let's put it like that. 10, 30 p.m. or a.m.? Both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both. Yeah, seriously. It's, yeah, yeah. It's a good question. It's both. 10, 30 to 2, 30 p.m. and a.m. both. Never eat. If you're going to eat, that food will become poison. That's all. Now, you can argue that, well, uh, people say that you have to eat in the afternoon and the sun is, you have heard that? And the sun is at the highest thing and the digestion is very strong, so at that time you eat. But the, but the whole logic is not there. The logic is the sun is too high. So the fire is too high. And the fire is very strong and if you put food, what's going to happen? going to become ash. Am I right? 
that's all it's going to become waste so generally you cook your food on the gas am i right you use the gas here in uk there is a gas isn't it so generally you cook your food on gas you don't cook your food in a forest fire you do that <laughs> you don't do that <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to put a whole tree on fire and cook your food you don't do that am i right if you, if you try to do that you you can't do that first of all if you try to do that your whole food becomes into ash immediately it just go waste because too much fire so in the afternoon there's too much fire and when there's too much fire your food gets wasted it doesn't become digested that's the whole point so between 10:30 to 2:30 we don't never take food now in temples i don't know when the lunch happens but two yeah. okay so it's it's it is 10:30 to 2:30 maximum my minimum is from 11:30 to 1:30 you see the point so 11:30 to 1:30 it's no 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 from 10:30 to 2:30 it's no and no that's all if if you at all have to take okay at least you have to do it till 1:30 but if you wait till 2:30 that's better and if you take after 2:30 that's a, that's a, that's a best actually um but if you can take after 3:30 that's a best after 1:30 it's good after 2:30 it's better after 3:30 it's a best so you can choose whatever you want um but it is advisable to take after 2:30 it is advisable then you then you remain healthy uh, now ayurved says about that and it's not just ayurved i have advised many devotees devotees ask me for the health because they know i am doctor so many sanyasis <coughs> ask me and i have uh, so they expect some medicines but i don't give them medicines a good doctor will not give medicine that's ayurved devote devote of doctors who give medicine i immediately understand he's not a good doctor but of course i mean to say nowadays uh, so i'm talking about devotee doctors i'm not talking about outside outside practice is very different if you don't give medicine they'll think you're not a doctor okay? that's first of all <laughs> you have to give medicine even if he doesn't need medicine you have to give him medicine mm-hmm. otherwise they'll lose patience but as a devotee doctor anybody who tells okay he's a doctor and he's a devotee he advises this medicines i immediately understand he's not a good doctor because a good doctor doesn't give medicines that's all a good doctor will advise you some lifestyle change and that has lot of power in fact in fact if you have fever uh, i can give you medicine which can treat your fever okay it might take okay any any medicine if you want to cure fever it takes at least 5 to 6 days am i right for fever to go no matter how much medicines you take that's why our teacher in medical college he said he said with medicines if you have fever with medicine it will take one week to get cured without medicines it will take seven days <laughs> he said that <laughs> so you can keep on taking medicines but fever has its own duration of course with medicines you little feel comfortable you can do your job and but it doesn't go so medicines but 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 you can change lifestyle and you can treat people like that i have treated many devotees who have got arthritis old age people have they were going to operation and I advise them something some simple thing actually simplicity is elegance anything simple will be more effective anything complex you can understand it will not work and that's a that's a that's a you know i also I, i come to know like if you hear somebody's lecture and if lecture is very complex you can immediately understand <laughs> lecture is not good it will not work the lecture is simple you can understand that has a real advice a practical realistic advice and that's why it goes so uh, that's why you know i ask many questions to devotees and they answer if the answer starts complicating i will say no it's not right answer even if it's right because it will not work it's not going to work simplicity is elegance nature is simple simple sky is simple water is simple fire is simple air is simple but they are very powerful and eternal elements so uh, the more the simple the more the better so these arthritis patients i recommend simple formula 
uh, people had Parkinson's and why something simple, it's very simple. I, I'll, I'll tell you at the end of lecture. And you, you, you will be amazed that uh, it, the answer is so simple that you will not believe it will work. That's the whole point there. That's how it goes. I mean, to say Mahaprabhu's movement is so simple that people can't believe it will work. Mahaprabhu said simply chant Hare Krishna and and all these Karmakandis and yogis, they thought, come on. And that was a debate between Gopal Chapal and who was that? Gopal Chapal and Haridas Thakur? Haridas Thakur chant Hare Krishna great liberation. Gopal Chapal said, you're crazy. Chanting Hare Krishna is so simple thing. <laughs> so sometimes don't be in, don't get fooled by simplicity. That's how it goes. So, okay, the first, this is a, a golden rule. Don't eat between 10.30 to 2.30. Don't eat anything. AM and PM both. Don't eat, don't drink. And uh, you can still drink but not eat. That's okay. You can drink but not eat. Okay, that's the first rule. Okay, if you have any questions, please ask me as I go along. Because you'll forget. And then I don't want to come back. Okay, just a minute, Prabhu. First, you can ask. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Ah. Sister, first, thank you so much for uh, sharing this very uh, <clears throat> um, important for us to understand. But I'll just try to understand if, for example, you're studying or you're working in the office, you're doing like some small activities. It's the best time than eat in the morning, isn't it? But for if you eat fruits and nuts, this is, takes less time for the digestion and you don't engage in the intellectual activities. Then um, in the middle of the day, you become hungry, but you still don't have a proper lunch. Yeah. And then you know that in the evening, you can only eat something what is the predominant is the moon energy. No, no, but the whole point is... Then because if you take something what is the sun energy, then it's not going to be properly... No, no, don't take in the evening. The point is, it's a practice. It's a discipline in your body. So initially, it might be difficult. Somebody might feel hungry in the afternoon. That's what you're telling? Uh, yeah, and uh, this but, like depends the place. For example, if in India, then the sun is 12 hours between 6 and Yeah, actually, actually, all right. Actually, I don't want to talk from watch. Because watch is a worst invention, according to me. Because watch disconnects you from nature. I mean to say, you don't know what's going on. But because people can't live without it, People have no training how to interpret the universe and that's why I told time. So most of the part it works, 9.30 to 1.30, it works most of the part of the world and until otherwise you are in Antarctic or Canada up there, Ottawa somewhere, you know, it doesn't work. Because, uh, because, uh, because if I say leave the watch and start interpreting universe, you have no clue how to do that. You have no idea, I know that, or you don't know, I don't need watch. I can tell when 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 three thirty will happen without watch, because I know that the environment will change. So according to me, three thirty will be different. According to watch, it will be different. Am I right? So I can interpret the universe because I know this science from my advice. But you cannot so we go by watch. That's all. So uh, I don't know whether this answered question. I don't know. So basically, you have to practice. To practice. If you feel hungry in the afternoon, practice, avoid it. Slowly you will get over it. And that's up to you. you. If you if you feel hungry in the afternoon, eat more in the morning. No problem. And then eat in the evening. Evening. Uh, so uh, so you have another rule. Don't eat after sunset. That you all know, am I right? Don't eat after sunset. Now there will be prasad after the program. Mahaprasad, a little bit. Okay, but if somebody wants to eat more, don't eat after sunset. Avoid it until unless you have not eaten the whole day. That's another thing. But don't eat after sunset. So that's how you have to go. Anyway, uh, I think your question will be answered when I get more rules. I think I got the point. Uh, yeah, yeah, just Mataji. Yeah. So yes, Prabhu, thank you. So that um, <laughs> between 10.30 and 2.30, you said not to eat, well, you can drink. You can drink, but you should not keep on drinking. Okay. So, um, are there any so. food groups that are, you would say, an exception to this rule? No. Fruits? Nothing. You're not supposed to put anything in your mouth. 
No, no fruit, no vegetables, no animals, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing. You can just put one thing, nothing. That's all. Our way this. It works. At it, you know what? Whatever I'm telling you, I've applied on myself. I've applied on people. I've applied on patients, and it works. You can you can try. You try and see, and you see the change in your health. That's all. That's all I can tell you. You can try and see. That's the best thing. Am I right? Right. Otherwise, you can keep on debating. But you try, and it's there. The rule is there, and you see it'll it'll help you a lot. Oh yeah. Oh, just a minute, Prabhu. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mataji wanted to ask. Just a question. Yeah. Just a minute. Um. So sunset means like even if you're like in America and it's sunset at like nine p.m. Mm. Nine p.m. Like if she lost her voice. She's saying if it's in, she's in America and the sunset's at nine p.m. Is that still? So she is probably eating her six. <laughs> that's all. That's all you're talking by watch. Yeah, sunset. Yeah, after sunset, don't eat. That's all. The sunset is at eight o'clock. You can eat at seven. It keeps changing, Prabhu. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it'll keep changing. It'll so keep you changing. Follow whenever it's sunset. Yeah, sunset rule. Follow sunset. But ten thirty to one thirty, you can follow by watch. Okay. Because ten thirty to one thirty, you will not be able to recognize. No. You can't do. I can do. But you can't do. So you just fix this and follow this. A sunset thing you can know. Am I right? You can. That's any any child can know. And that you can adjust. <laughs> that's all. Hmm. You can. Should you fast before Mangalarati, or you can have like an early breakfast before Mangalarati? Uh, can Can anybody help me out? Just she put the chart. Can you uh, have the chart before Mangalarati, or you have to fast? Before Mangal Arati, you want to eat? Come on. <laughs> can you put the charge, charge? Can you drink some milk? Why? Because you're fasting, like in Kartik month, normally we are doing, like, you know, we're trying to do more fasting. So, you know, I know we, I know we don't eat lunch. She's been fasting for all of us. Well, Mangala, before Mangal Arati, you're not supposed to eat. So you should fast. So you have to adjust your life in such a way. That you do are not, you are not forced to eat before Mangal Aarti. It will get spoiled. Your health will get spoiled. No, I can't come back. Just, just, just put it on charge. I'll meet after some time. Yeah. In the morning. Food groups. There's no food group. I mean to say, I'll talk about it. There's nothing. This all Western civilization is crap. <laughs> They're all useless people, and I don't want to talk about them because because they talk about the superfoods and all uh, this, all these things. This is good. This is good. Actually, it's not like that. Human body is very complex. One food, one food can be poison for somebody and nectar for somebody else. So it's not necessary that that food. If they are saying this food is good for health, it is not good for health for everybody. And 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 much more important is the time factor. At what time you eat, a good food can spoil your health if you eat at the wrong time. Mm. So the whole point is, people know what to eat, but people don't know how to eat and when to eat. And that's 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 very important. And and all these, I mean, to say all these people come up with different kind of foods, but it doesn't add with. So eat, eat normally. That's all. Fruits in the morning. Even I'm telling you, you know, eat whatever you want. And there are some rules I'll tell you. But eat whatever you want, uh, whatever gives you satisfaction. That's the first rule. Seriously, I'm very, very serious about this. That is a second rule. Whatever gives you satisfaction, whatever gives you happiness of mind, that is very important in eating. And that's not sense gratification, by the way. <laughs> That's not sense gratification because if you don't have a satisfied mind and a happy mind, your body will not digest anything. It will revolt. So, so, so you have to. So, see, your the whole point in eating is you have to listen to your body. That's a science to listen to your body. Your body will tell you yourself. 
so if you, if, you, if suppose if in breakfast you like you want to eat fruit if suppose you want to eat fruit eat fruit if you don't want to eat fruit if you if you're not feeling don't eat that's all don't make a rule now that's the whole idea western civilization they are trying to fix something okay now now this time you have to eat fruit this time uh, this much calories this much this much proteins and this time fruit water this this wrong because the body is changing environment is changing everything is in flux and we and we have to decide what to do at what time so how do you decide krishna has given you mind krishna has given you this uh, this uh, this feeling of satisfaction that's why he has given us it krishna has given us feeling satisfaction to do sense gratification given us feeling of satisfaction to judge what should we do what is speaking to us but we are not listening you uh, you got the point so you decide no problem when you get up if you feel fruits eat fruits if you feel vegetables eat vegetables if you feel eating hot eat hot if you feel eating cold you, you take cold no problems at all and if you do that you will be healthy that's all so so don't fix don't fix but you have to fix a time that's very important so the time of eating is um, i'm ta- i'm talking many rules here okay the time of eating and time of eating is uh, in, in in the in the morning you have to eat from 6 to 9 or say or maybe 6 to 10 10:30 i told you that but if you eat between 6 to 9 that's the best and the evening from from 3 if if you want exact time time is also mentioned 3:24 to to 6:24 that's what it was do that at time that's the that's the first prayer of or the last prayer of the day so either that and that's the best time to eat or 3 to 3 to 6 you can put it like that got my point so that's that, that's all i do like that just eat. if you if, if you feeling not to eat don't eat don't eat but then you will say i'll feel hungry afterwards no problem because there's another rule i'll tell you there's another rule but which rule i'm talking about now <laughs> i How many rules did I tell you? One, two, three, four, five, or just one? <laughs> I just told you one. Yeah, I'll I'll keep on continuing. It'll repeat itself. But here is a point that that's the whole point of questions. You know, when questions come, then it becomes very complicated. Yeah, uh, just just mother. Mm-hmm. She wanted to ask you too. Rathika, go. Give false eggs. Give false eggs, then you still have to follow the ten thirty two. If you fall sick, then you have to follow more. <laughs> <laughs> Because if you don't follow, you become more sick. That's all. Yeah. Uh, so, what is the ideal uh, meal schedule? What should be the ideal meal schedule as recommended by? What will be the ideal? What should be the ideal meal schedule? Meal schedule. Schedule. schedule for what? How for should we like? Let's say we get up for the mangala. I, I just told. No, I just told. From six to nine thirty, you eat. Mm-hmm. Two meals. Six. Yeah, two meals. Of course, two meals. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean to say, you want to eat three? <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> That that that's a rule in Ayurved. <coughs> Two meals are for humans. Three is for animals. Humans, if they eat three meals, they'll become sick. That's a very important rule. Don't break that. You can eat a snack. That's okay, but not a meal. <laughs> but you have to give a definition of snack to yourself. Otherwise, a snack can very quickly become a meal. But. But no, yeah, yeah. So two meals. That's all. One go three meals. Yeah, probably. I'll just go to that. So the discovery of so many questions. Uh, please go uh, and give. A can anybody get the extension for that? Oh, because I need that computer. Uh, because there, yeah, so yeah. Please go and give a light on that, that about the nature of the food and capability. Because uh, Ashtanga Hridayam explains very really a lot that we be using the right, no right and, uh, nature of the food or wrong capability that is increase the diseases within the body. Yeah, actually nature of the food, uh, you know what, I didn't want to touch it because it's pretty complex subject. Then you go in Vat, Pet, Kaf and nobody's going to understand anything. Mm-hmm. And if they understand and they want to apply, half knowledge is very dangerous and they mess up their health. Mm-hmm. That's why I didn't really want to talk. I can talk about that, but it will not practically... it's not going to help you because for that you need many sessions and uh, i didn't want you to go into that uh, because life is already complicated and i'll complicate your life with vat pitka also and then 
and then you'll be talking about vat 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 and then you don't know whether it's vat or pit or kaf and then you're confused and then that's the whole point but but your question is very relevant and uh, if i have time i'll talk about that but i'm just talking some rules some rules here uh, between you said between 10:30 and 1:30 you may drink 10:30 to 2:30 10:30 to 2:30 you may drink just want to clarify the drink is just water or Yes. See the whole point is as less as possible. That's the whole point. That's why I told you don't even drink because as soon as I say drink, people will start thinking, okay, first water, then soup, <laughs> and then something else. <laughs> so yeah, avoid it as far as possible. That's all. Yeah, yeah, cool. Just a. Um, it's like a question that normally we have prasad among Turkey. And we are with the devotees. So if we try to apply it, we cut whole prasadam and we will take other prasadam. So how? how that's more important. In yeah, in in uh, in health, in yeah, in there's a problem in temples, you know. So you keep the prasadam with you in hot hot buy a hot uh, yes. what's that hot yes. flask yes. container. container? Yes. Put it in that. Keep it. It's as simple as that. Take a look. Yeah, I didn't. I do that, but I don't want to spoil my health because simply I have to sit with devotees. Because when I spoil my health, the devotees will not be there with me. That's all. <laughs> they stay alone. So better stay alone ra- now rather than staying alone when you become sick. <laughs> Who cares for anybody? Man? You know, they can help, but at the same time we have to suffer. That's the whole point. So I, I keep a box, and if 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 I'm in such a setup. I will just buy a box, keep it, and take it afterwards. No problem. Yeah, Mataji. Okay, there were two questions. Um, thank you, very nice uh, information and the lecture. The you said that we should eat what the body uh, wants, so that is good for us. Um, but most of the times, I want to eat the wrong stuff like carbohydrates. You you see? Okay, okay. One point. Yeah, uh, one wait, wait, listen, listen. Ayurved doesn't talk about carbohydrate proteins, and this is mess. Mm. This is see, I, I'm both allopathic and Ayurvedic. It's a it's a crazy concept, carbohydrate proteins, and this this works. I'm not saying it's not reality. It is good, but there are more higher principles which are much more powerful than this. So if you stop thinking about carbohydrate proteins, just stop. Eat what you feel satisfied. That's the greatest principle. Most of the times, if it is carbon, no problem. Oh, no problem. Yeah, what's the problem in that? You'll become fat. Well, that that that's the whole point. People yeah, worry. Vegetarians, so dal's and proteins. They say you should eat also and fiber. And Just eat what your body wants. That's all. Body will tell you. If your if your body is going in carbohydrates, body will tell you. I don't want to take this. I I need dal. It'll it'll crave for dal. See, craving Krishna is a gift. That is a gift Krishna has given. But we use craving for a sense gratification. That's wrong. But we can use craving to keep ourselves healthy. That's a body response. Okay. Just, just, just like just like when you when you feel thirsty, what does body feels thirsty? If, if there is less water in the body, you will body will feel thirsty. Mm-hmm. Body is telling you. Similarly, you have different cravings. Sometimes you don't feel they like eating sweets. Mm-hmm. All right. Because your body is full of carbs and it doesn't want. Sometimes you don't feel eating salty. You want to eat sweet because body is having less carbs. So you just follow that and you will be healthy. Okay. That's all. So nowadays they they are talking about detox the body, the intermittent fasting. So 6 p.m. we should eat, thereafter we should not eat, and then we should try to keep 16 hours gap. So then next morning at 10 a.m. we can eat. Just forget this intermittent fasting. Forget that. this intermittent fasting because. Because you know what I'll tell you. If you follow Vedic process, automatically is going to happen. If you eat from six to nine, and evening three to six, and after six if you don't eat, from six to next six it's already twelve hours. It's tw- intermittent fasting. And they got this concept from Vedic Vedas, you know. Okay. So, but eight o'clock if I eat also okay, fourteen hours. Say if I just drag it a bit. After sunset, don't eat. No, eight a.m. After eight a.m. Yeah. Six p.m. then eight a.m. Yeah, you just eat. That's all. <laughs> See, you know what? Just, just keep this timing and eat. No problem. No problem. I, this is. 
This you see Apple watch is a worst invention. They say okay protein carbohydrate and then you're running and then you're keeping time. It's crap. I mean to say you run, you run and you feel tired, stop. That's all. Why do you want to run? And because watch is not saying I'll keep on running. It's no, no nonsense. You, your watch is not saying but your body is saying to stop. Your watch is saying not to stop. So whom to listen? <laughs> Simple. You don't need a watch. You become tired, stop. If you feel fresh, keep on running. Bus. Yeah, Mataji. Going through the twice, like you said. So it looks like in Ayurveda, you're supposed to eat twice a day, right? Yeah, 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 twice a day. Twice a day. Humans, twice a day. Yogis eat once, humans, twice, animals, thrice, and people who eat four times, they'll die. <laughs> See, why do keep on eating? We are not born for eating. <laughs> that's a whole idea. Yeah. If you don't eat, that's good. Uh, so you have to change your habit. Better change your habit and save time and chant Hare Krishna and read. And otherwise, you know what's going to happen? If you keep on eating in between, your mind will keep on craving unnecessarily. And then while chanting, you will feel hungry. So you will never get perfection in chanting. Chanting needs full focus. Bhakti Thakur says anybody who doesn't discipline their life, they will never enter trance. Because then you're chanting, you're feeling thirsty, food and this and that and you can't focus your mind. Just remember, Mataji. I wanted to ask about fluids, you know, like drinking fluids because you know, your vines bring I'll, 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 I'll come on that, I'll come on that and, and I think you'll get a shock, shock of your life but I'll come on that. Seriously, I want to tell something which will, something else. Yeah. Yeah, I do Ayurvedic keeping and general Puri and the therapist told me, don't do your jaffa on an empty stomach. So, so at six o'clock I can have something to eat, Then, but then that means I only have like one meal a day. So, so what's best to do? Maybe I have okay. like porridge for breakfast and lunch at 3.30 and then that's it? I don't know which therapist you went and what kind of problem you have. I don't know. But this therapist is best now, like, you know, where did you go? It's from Marissa. from Marissa. He follows himself or he doesn't follow? He follows what? He follows the principles in his life? Because most of these doctors, they don't follow and they advise. I don't know what they do at home. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, uh, okay, if he's advising you not to do empty stomach, then take a little juice or something in the morning. In summers, you can take juice. In winters, you can take some hot thing. Hot tea. Yeah, something. Okay, so that's a rule. So, okay, first rule is, yeah, don't eat. Second rule is, I'll quickly go to the rules. What's the time? Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, second rule is, uh, food is a best medicine. This is not a rule, but it's a principle. Keep in mind, food is a best medicine. So, uh, the whole idea is about food is, uh, th that's what I told. If you, if you eat if you eat food, I, the first thing is what to eat. But anyway, I'm going to do that because in devotees' life, it's pretty much simple. For non-devotees, we have to tell what to eat because they're eating all kind of crap things. For devotees, we, anyway, we offer to Krishna and we take nice food stuff, so that's okay. Um, uh, so food is the best medicine. Uh, when to eat? That's the most important thing. Remember that. And time I have told you. Okay. Uh, the next point is. Rule is, hunger is our best friend. Remember that. Because generally when we feel hungry, we eat. And we don't know how to use hunger in service of God. But, but there's an art to use hunger. Because, because, because if you remain too hungry, then there's a problem. You'll feel weak. You'll feel acidity. But if you don't keep hunger with you, then you'll become deceased. Now hunger is important, you know why? Because hunger helps if, if you have hunger throughout the day, little hunger, then it will eat your diseases first. Now what hunger does is hunger wants to eat. Now first it will not eat your body, first it will eat your diseases. If you keep hunger. And that's why you have to keep little hunger the entire day. Now how to do it? That's the whole point. Now, the, the first point is if you're hungry, don't think you have to eat. That's the whole point there. It's not necessary to get rid of hunger. You have to keep. 
now you have to keep now how to keep that hunger now the whole point to keep hunger is um, uh, you should know how to eat when to eat and how to eat so there, there is another rule of eating and the rule is uh, you have heard about this rule 25 percent should be food uh, sorry sorry half stomach should be food half stomach and, and the rest half out of that half uh, half should be water and half should be air am i right that should one be the third. Yeah. yeah there are different uh, different different uh, divisions okay one third you can say one third food one third water one third yeah, you can you can talk like this yeah. that makes little simple but the whole question is whether it's one fourth or one third how do you know that's the whole question you're not going to do ultrasound after every food and <laughs> See. That's sad, but uh, that's not how it goes practically. <laughs> you can't do that. I mean, to say you don't go in Prashadam Hall and <laughs> okay, this much, and then <laughs> you don't do that. What's a practical thing? How do you do? How do you know it's one third, one third, one third? Uh, and and there is advice in Ayurveda that how do you do? The whole idea is when you eat, after eating, you should feel little hunger. And that means your half, one third is with air, empty. And that's the whole point, keep hunger. After, after eating food, when you get up, you should feel little hunger. It's not that after you eating food and then uh, you can't even breathe. <laughs> and then you are out. And that's how people eat, by the way. Satisfaction. <laughs> Satisfaction is in the terms of not the quantity. <laughs> It's in terms of what food. <laughs> so, that, that's, so, so that's what I was saying. When I talk about rules, things will become a little more clear as I talk. So yeah, so yeah, satisfaction in terms of the items of the food, not in the quantity. So keep little hunger. And after practice, you will feel satisfied even with little hunger. You will feel, okay, good. Now this is, this is a good you know, thing. So that's very important. So when you get up, you should feel, I mean, I mean to say when you, when you get up after food, after eating, you should have a feeling that you can again eat something. If there's a scope of eating after eating, then that means you have eaten properly. You got my point? Yeah. So, so that's, so, and that hunger will remain with you because you have kept, it will remain with you. Uh, yeah, if you are, uh, if you are really, I mean to say, but if you are really hungry, you can go, but, but, and that's a rule, by the way, in Brahmanas, they follow this in South India, they take once, they take, they take food, then they take water, and they put water all around, and then the food cannot cross that line, and that's it, so, uh, and that's a very good system, I, you take food in your plate, by, your, your eyes will tell whether this is okay for you or not. So you use the function of your eyes. Uh, so by, by eyes you can see, okay, you will feel, okay, this quantity is okay today. You sit and then you eat and then finish. Because your, your mind can confuse you then. And it's all, that's all. Just get up and go. If you want to eat hunger is for two rotis, you should eat one. So you've left some hunger in your... Yeah, no that you can decide. That you can decide how. Just how it goes. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but uh, uh, yeah. yeah, but but practically this will go like this. Practically this will happen because I'm, I'm, we apply ourselves. You know, it goes like that. So uh, please follow. This is very important rule. Keep hunger, and that hunger will eat away all your diseases. Anybody who follows us this rule, they they will never get cancer in their life. They can't get. And the, 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 one of the reasons, big reasons of cancer is uh, people eat full stomach. They don't, they don't keep hunger. And, and they keep on stuffing. So if they keep on stuffing, cells revolt. You keep on stuffing with food and cells divide you. And then they don't know what to do, where to store. So okay, no storage, so divide. <laughs> that's all in simple words. Make space and that's cancer. That's all. And that is why you see, you see all these poor people, they become, they don't become diseased often. They get a different kind of disease, of course, infections and that, but they don't get this lifestyle diseases, which is very common in rich people. Because they never experienced hunger, they don't know what is hunger. 
and just eating all the time. And that is why even if somebody gives you prasad in between, don't take. Just honor it. We can't, we can't take. You can honor it. You can honor it. You can take little and that's it. Finish. Just like now they will serve Mahaprasad. Why you have to take? Why? Just because you are there? <laughs> or just because Prasad exists and it has come to you? <laughs> and that, that's the whole point there. No. No, it's not necessary. Prashad doesn't want to come to you. That's all. <laughs> you want to go to Prashad. It's the mind. Yeah, it's the mind. mind. So I don't take in night. Even if there's Prashad. That's okay. Prashad is, devotees are taking, we are happy. It's not about us. That's better. That's, that's a better sentiment rather than, I mean, just if you talk at the level of sentiments, Krishna conscious cultivating sentiments, and we see many devotees on in prasad, we are happy. Good. So we so we get good health and we get good Krishna consciousness. Alright? Yeah. I would like to ask regarding to drinking. Oh, wait, uh, while eating? While oh. drinking, while eating. So I have read many different uh, things. No, don't eat while drinking. That's or don't so don't drink while eating. Before, because if, if yeah, one before, side before. Of side or half, should be water, then you drink before. No, no, uh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Uh, generally, water comes from food. Generally. Yeah. If there's dal, if there is vegetables, if there's enough water. You don't have to drink water. That one third water will come from food. But if you're eating this Western diet, it might not. No. You're eating pizzas and patties and this. But if you're eating traditional diet, which is in temples, it's there. It's in vegetables. In the hall, you don't need water. Mm. All right. Normal water you should not take with food. Yeah, Mataji. In fact, when you are on the drink like that, they say have one hour before you eat, drink water. And, and one hour after. One hour. Yeah, it is it is actually the rule is not by hours, but if you want to take on hours, that's okay. But before food you can take um, any time. But after food, you have to you have to have a feeling that your food is your stomach is empty, and then you take water. So after after some time, you will feel that okay, things are digested. See, the whole point is in eating and sleeping and health. Feeling is very important. That intuition is very important because if if you don't go by feelings, you can't be healthy. In exercise, in sleeping, and in eating, and modern civilization. The first thing they have, they have, they have, they have actually destroyed is feeling part because they are too much on intelligence. Man is a rational animal. It's intelligence, it's logic. And that's why people are unhealthy. Our culture, Vedic culture is based on more on feelings and more on intuition. Am I right? That's the how, and of course that's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. So people don't know what to do, so people are confused. Actually Krishna has given you all gifts to be healthy. This body is complete. Om Purnamidam Purnamada Purnat Purnamadichyate That is complete. This system is complete. This complete system is an automated system. It will tell you what to do, when to do, provided we know how to interpret it and decode it. And that can be done by feelings and not just by intelligence. So you see the point there? Uh, okay. Uh, here is another rule. Um, please, uh, direction of eating. Uh, you should sit either north or east, facing, facing, facing. If you want to eat, face north or east. Don't face south or west. Mm -hmm. South or west. Yeah. Don't do that. That's advisable. Where is <laughs> I don't know where is east here. Where is east? For this room, where the sun rises east. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know where does sun rise there. Maybe face the deity. What's that when you face? When we are facing the deities, is here, the that is east. This side. That is east. Yeah. yeah, that's east. Come on, this is deities. The deities are here, right? Yeah, there. That is east. Okay. So, so that whatever, that just yeah, that way or that way, is just yeah, this. Yeah, north is there. Whatever I mean to say, so that's to cut, mm. facing, facing either north or either east. North or east. Okay. If you face south or east or west, you are going to become yeah, unhealthy. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Except, except when you are in a pandal program, what can you do? we can't do anything. So, 
you can't just facing somewhere and everybody is facing that side except that uh, otherwise you can you can you should not destroy this rule okay um, and now one thing is there uh, uh, this is very important wash your okay it's very important to sit and eat uh, cross legged uh, as far as possible don't sit on chair and eat as far as possible don't sit on chair and eat because sitting on chair is not a vedic standard while eating because why because because when you sit your body doesn't know what to do i mean to say when you're standing your body knows you're going to walk when you're sitting your body knows you're resting but this is a half position am i right not standing you're not sitting body is confused so it's not prepared to eat so this kind of thing is in western civilization chair and table but in vedic civilization you're sitting cross legged am i right on floor even if even if you go to india uh, people used to sit on the bench they used to sit cross cross legged or maybe a tree below a tree on that munch munch what do we say that uh, elevation people used to sit cross like it is hanging legs that was not allowed in vedic tradition in temples it was it's impossible if you sit hanging legs they'll cut your legs <laughs> yeah 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 uh, that was a punishment in shastras if the king sees person sitting in the temple with like this hanging legs cut his legs <laughs> because your legs are visible to krishna so to cut your legs so and in fact while eating we don't we don't eat like that sit on floor that's the best thing i i got into the habit of kneeling <coughs> kneeling yeah how is it on the floor knee a little bit painful when i sit well, how do you kneel like this for yeah possible like that yeah like fine i mean to say we have to sit This is one of the asan. That's okay. okay. That's okay. But don't hang your legs. That's very important. So of course, I mean to say, if you're in office or if you're in a, ho- a hotel, then hotel. Yeah. Then you have to sit like this, or maybe in a plane. <laughs> but, uh, but 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 I I don't sit like this. Except now I'm sitting like this in chair. But generally, I sit on chair with cross legged also. I do that personally. So yeah. and and uh, i mean to say if if you cannot put both your legs on the chair there's a system to sit i mean to say you, you have to inform your body that you're sitting that's a whole idea you have to inform your body so what i do is i i keep one leg up you 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 know how, how you know it's done how is that ha like this yeah like this so by one leg if you put uh, at least body is informed that you are sitting and then it can prepare for eating okay so it's very important uh, we have to develop a habit of listening we don't listen to anybody am i right <laughs> we don't listen to krishna we don't listen to a body we don't listen to universe we are that's called false ego by the way that's a we are unhealthy everything is false ego because a false ego we are unhealthy and that's what is ayurveda that's why ayurveda is very diff- that's why it is vedas it's connected to ego and god the principles are coming from there for modern medicine it's not coming from these principles that's why they are on they are in apple watch they are in time they are in carbohydrates proteins they are messing up their own health and others health that's how they are doing so that's a connection uh, there vedic connection Uh, that's nonsense <laughs> that might be for diabetic patient not for ordinary people that's wrong absolutely wrong and that's why you see you see so, so, so she is saying small frequent meals are good for health that's the medicine but, but but now they have come to this intermittent fasting and they are saying a long term you have to be hungry they keep on changing uh that's why that's yeah that's why that's why i know i know and that's why you know i was i was i'm writing a book on health because everybody speaks so many things and most of them they don't follow themselves and that's why the advice doesn't work and uh, i mean to say the whole problem in this age is not lack of knowledge but it's more knowledge 
we know so many things what to do what not to do that's that's why i thought i'll give this seminar that that's the whole purpose otherwise i am not i am not at all enthusiastic to speak about health i don't speak but i am speaking because devotees are confused that's all and if you find any other advice people will tell you so many things but what i advise you what i have told you please practice for one month and see for yourself see no problem you can leave it but at least see that's what i'm telling that's all because many people will say many things uh, that's why I, I, that's why i'm writing a book on health also so that somebody tells anything you can show you know see here's evidence and this is like this if you want to say something give the evidence am i right so i'm not giving you evidence now because i don't have time and all those things but these are the things i've told many devotees they have benefited and that's how it goes yeah mataji uh, i'm going to finish mataji what you are saying my uh, in laws they they are from south and they follow all these things and when i got married and when i saw these all thing direction and everything i thought like they are crazy so much yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, i am crazy and yeah, yeah. so uh, and they are like the age also my father in law is 80 he don't have any disease he goes to the doctor he tests his blood and the doctor says you don't have anything you don't have to come back see that and he comes home and he says like uh, no uh, the doctor doesn't know anything maybe i got some disease <laughs> he goes to the doctor and he's he's out around he's but not uh, 100 and uh, i think 8 or 9 he still travels in bus in india in bus in hyderabad see that and no he uses his stick and no other any no so you see all the yeah, these principles are coming from vedic tradition and these people are following they are living so long and these scientists they are doing research crap research and people are dying by their research <laughs> you simply go to india and see people who are living so long and try to do the same thing that's just finished that's simple as that as my child knows they'll spend billions of dollars in their research and come up some stupid molecule and then and then say this molecule is good what a crap that's all <laughs> Yeah, Mataji. Allow me to share my retrospective realization as well. Yeah. So uh, I have seen in Haryana, which is another What's part happened? of India, uh, which is predominantly an agricultural community. So my grandparents, they would just uh, eat cereals. There was no veg, non-vegetarian in that community. They mm. would eat cereals, and they would eat uh, milk-based products. And they would be most physically active people in the country, producing lot of agriculture. Lot okay, of good. Agriculture. See. No. So in the Haryana, country, no Haryana, no Haryana, no. People used to follow all these things. Mm. And that's what milk-based products. That's that's about that go that here goes veganism. You know, like of course the 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 logic of veganism is different. They the slaughter of animals. They want to. They don't want to take milk. That, we can understand that. We are we are with them on this page, but not taking milk. That's then they will have to have problems in their life okay so i'll just quickly uh, do this uh, before you keep on <laughs> talking okay well, one of the rules is direction another rule is please wash your mouth and feet after eating and before eating okay so so why you have to wash hands before and after eating uh, because it will help you in digestion yeah it will help you in digestion and uh, and also it will help you according to vedic tradition to get free of ghosts because ghost ghost yeah because 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 if you don't wash your feet uh, after eating food after eating food then ghost will enter your body yeah yeah because ghosts enter through feet that's so this is the entry point from ghost No, it's it's about ghosts also. That's how it goes, and that's why in uh, that's why in uh, West so many psychiatric problems. According to Arvid, psychiatric problems is called bhut vidya. Ghosts enter, and then and then I mean to say, you might not be clinically diseased, but but you will get envious thoughts, lusty, angry, because they enter. So that's advice. That's if in South India you don't wash your feet after eating, they will they will actually ostracize you from the community. and so that's that's completely wrong so yeah before and after eating wash your hands and feet as far as possible and mouth so before and after eating what you do is you have to wash uh, your your mouth 
mouth out means rinse your mouth and put water on your eyes, ears and nose. That's how we say. And wash your hands till here and wash your feet. Yeah, yeah, everything. Because everything becomes, becomes contaminated. So, because, 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 because according to us, eating is a sacred process. Alright? We are honoring prashadam. So, we are doing service to God. So, it's a holy thing. So, because it's a holy thing, we, we purify ourselves before eating. And after eating, we wash our hands and feet. Let's go like that. Okay, and uh, so, uh, so, the another rule is never take water after eating. I told, don't do that. Uh, okay, don't eat curd at night. Curd eating at night is equal to eating beef. That's how scripture says. Never ever eat curd at night. That that's according to Dharma Shastras, but according to Advait, it'll it'll make your health absolutely worse. Curd at curd at night is. Curd at night is poison. After sunset. After. At 6 p.m.? After sunset. <laughs> yes, Excuse me. After sunset. That's the whole point. Don't eat curd. That's all. It's, it's poison. It's sinful. It's bad. So, uh, uh, and, uh, okay, for, for cooking, don't use olive oils and all these. Put olive oil in your flush. And flush it. It's not there in scripture. Scripture just mentioned four oils for humans. Other oils are for animals. Scientists might recommend you, but Krishna doesn't. So just four oils you can use in eating. Uh, the best. I mean, this is not the best, but any of them. Coconut oil, groundnut oil. Groundnut means peanut. Coconut oil, peanut oil, mustard oil, and sesam oil. That's all. No matter what they say. This is cholesterol free oil, this is low HDL, this is... People say no, so many things. Don't believe them. Believe Krishna. Can you say those four again? Coconut, peanut. What's happening? Your, this thing is not good. Does anybody know how to fix this? Because because I think you are you're tightening the wrong screw there. Bhakta Silpu. Mm -hmm. Tightening the wrong screw. <laughs> Coconut, sesame, mustard, uh, and peanut. Four oils. Ghee is the best. Of course, of course, ghee is the best. But what if they are refined? We get them refined. You have no choice. <laughs> it's not refined, that's the best. Kacha, kacha, khana, you know that. No? Okay, so that's about oils. Please uh, use them. What's that? Cold? Yeah, you can take. Cold pressed and hot pressed. Oh, it says like that? Then you should use which is for internal use. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, just me was the best. Okay, I'll quickly finish uh, here. Uh, please, uh, please don't. Okay, this is very important. Uh, now, this is an important point. Please keep in mind. Take as less water as you can. Now, you might not be really comfortable with this. <laughs> but that's what modern people say, more water. But Ayurveda says as less water as you can. In fact, in fact, what Ayurveda says is, when you become, when you feel thirsty, then drink. Don't just keep on stuffing anything. Mm -hmm. See, the body wants water, give it water. But don't just, okay, I have to drink this much water and keep on drinking. That's a very bad thing you do with your body. So that's not what we are supposed to do. So uh, how less water we have to drink? Well, as less as possible. You have to practice drinking less water. Now, how less we should go? Well, it is said, if you are thirsty, for four, if, if for four days you didn't, don't get any water, for suppose, four days, you're lost in a desert, don't get any water, then, then drink just one drop of water if somebody gives you. That's how less, I mean to say as less as possible, that will keep you more healthy rather than drinking water. It's my personal experience. Uh, for last 25 years, 
I drink water once in six days. I do. I don't drink. I practiced. I practiced. So I'm healthy. I'm actually much more healthy than any devotee at my age. In 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 Brahmacharya Ashram and Iskcon, I don't have any problems. So, uh, and that makes sense because you see you see the process of mummification. You know this. If 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 you if you take a food, and if, if so suppose if you keep a dry food in the container, it will not get spoiled. If you keep food with water wet, it will get spoiled very quickly. So less the water, the less the cells become they they, they sustain. That's how it goes. But it's not just that. Uh, there are many other many other things so but you have to practice it if you reduce water now you might get you know thirsty and so how to know how, i mean to say how to reduce drinking water that's the whole point am i right that so that so you start reduce for first of all leave keeping bottle with yourself don't put water bottle with you that's the first step because if you have water bottle you keep on drinking You'll drink. That's all. If you don't have water, water bottle. At least you will have to tolerate thirst for some time, mm. and the thirst will destroy toxins in your body. Mm. It'll eat away other toxins. If you have some water bottle, then then you just you just keep on drinking. Uh, so. So can I verify that what you're saying is that um, water is not necessarily a purifier, and it's not. A necessary thing to be to be drinking water regularly because I've always understood. Oh yeah, actually you are you're right you're right. Where people say to drink more water and it purifies, it, it, it detoxifies, flush out the toxins, yeah. and this and that and, and that and that. Thing, it's a healthy thing to drink lots of water. It's always been my for years. Yeah, everybody, everybody. Or the West, it's like that. In the in India also, it's like that. Keep on drinking and keep on urinating, and that's what you have to do whole life. <laughs> that's life meant for. And Come on, these people are mad <laughs> because in India you see Vedic tradition. You these people who lived 104 years, 108 years. If you ask in China and India, their their lifespan is very long. So it's Chinese also. Now, if you see the tradition, all of them were drinking less water. They didn't used to drink water much. They were working in fields. See, most of them were working in fields. And fields they used to just work and work, and under the sun they used to sweat a lot, and 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 sweating and the relationship to that water was very less. They were not. They used to eat in the morning, go to farms, and come work, come in the evening, eat, and that's it, finish. This is Western civilization, so it's it's not right actually, because the whole thing is uh, now now the latest scientific studies drink less water. They are changing it. So there's a reputed maxim, British Medical General, and they released many articles. Drink less water because more water drinking is producing a lot of diseases, and the number one disease by drinking more water is kidney stones. Oh. By the way, you might have heard that kidney stones. Once you get kidney stones, you have to eat water, flush it. That's another thing. But before you get kidney stones, if you take drink water, you get more kidney stones because stones now they found the kid. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, minerals. Water gives minerals, and kidney stones. They 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 need a kernel there to form that whole layer. So that is provided with water, and that is your pre body disposes to stones. So then your whole problem there. Am I right? My wife, she distills all her water. She has all this water. I know, I know. They distill and this and that and that. <laughs> but that's not water, by the way. She couldn't make it tonight, unfortunately. Really unfortunate. <laughs> Actually, all these machines they are saying, no, distilled water and what that what they say, some something more, something something else. This water. Actually, that's uh, uh, this is not water. They are they are they are making something else out of water. It looks like water, but that's not water. Because water is what God has given in original form. Actually, they recently did it in these countries because they put the government put fluoride in the water. So so okay fine. Uh, the, the the best thing to purify water, which is mentioned by scriptures, is boil it. It is traditional. It will go eternally like that. If you boil, everything vaporizes, uh, minerals and whatever toxins. Pure water is there. That's the best thing. And then cool it and keep it. You don't need any machine. That's the best thing you can do. That's just suggested by God, and it will work eternally.
so okay i'll just quickly finish and there's water and then uh, um, eat when hungry but at proper times so this is about eating i think i'll stop here because you all have to go and sleep so uh, but i'll just tell you two sleeping rules what you need uh, always don't never keep your head on the in the north while sleeping don't do that you can keep your head in the west in the east and in the south but if you keep in the north then your lifespan will reduce you going to die early so don't do that okay and another thing is before sleeping please wash your feet again so for the same reason because ghosts can enter your body wash your feet and then dry it if you wash your feet and you sleep with a wet feet again ghost can enter so you have to wash and then dry and then you have a nap uh, day time never sleep day time sleeping is not recommended now uh, now well if you become tired what do you mean by sleep more than 48 minutes is called as sleep that's the point if you sleep more than 48 minutes that's called sleep so in day time if you want to take rest and sometimes you want to take rest you have got up in the morning for mangal aarti it's a long time so less than 48 minutes is called a nap more than 40 minutes is called a sleep nap is allowed but sleep is not allowed until un- until otherwise you have not slept in the night like janmashtami you are getting up late then you can take rest otherwise don't sleep in day if you, if you sleep more than 48 minutes i mean if you sleep in the day time then uh, then ghost will enter your body they will possess your body you will have all these bad thoughts and bad problems don't do that uh, and this is said in quran this is said in bible this is said in ayurveda this is said in chinese religion this is said in sufism in kabbala in tao everywhere people sleep say don't sleep in day time especially for you know especially brahmachari ashram and full time devotees they sleep and then they sleep and they sleep and sleep, sleep. it's just that's a very bad thing yeah um, i just got to finish the sleep cycle is yeah like you said for eight minutes if you break the sleep cycle then you have it takes 4 hours for your brain to recover so the only way to sort that out is to have a cold shower so then what do you recommend that we have 20 minutes nap and then cold shower no below 48 minutes just sleep that's all so you have 48 minutes nap yeah and then 48 minutes nap that's all Not, not more than for it. Means not on the bed. No, no, on the bed anywhere, mm-hmm. anywhere, mm-hmm. anywhere. Okay, and the next thing is, uh, if you sleep, uh, if you want to conquer sleep, it's by sleeping less, mm-hmm. not sleeping more. <laughs> so if you practice sleeping less, the whole point is sleeping is discipline. The and the another very important point is, the cut off point to remain awake in the night is ten thirty. after 10:30 if you are awake every minute every minute that clock goes your body will become your body is actually going down it is become it is getting destroyed from inside after 10:30 maximum you should be on the bed and you should be sleeping between 10:30 to 2:30 you should be sleeping in the night because that's the time where your body hormone changes your cycle universe changes body is preparing to sleep if you are awake you are going against the universe you're going against below of the against the current you will become unhealthy so if you want to get up sleep at 10:30 get up at 2:30 that's good rather than getting up late and that's a bad thing so that's what you can do and about about exercise about exercise please do 10 minutes exercise daily if you don't do exercise no matter how much organic food how what when you eat it's not going to work i tell you exercise is must there is no way to detoxify the body except exercise even water will not help that says the water shastra says exercise is the only way to get dushi wish the word uses dushi wish the the toxins toxins due to food pesticides fertilizers toxins due to wrong wrong combination of food also exercise now how much exercise you have to do the best way to do to, to, to do is uh, do don't do much first of all don't go half an hour because you'll not be able to do daily the point is to do daily you see so uh, how much you do you do in the morning and when you feel fresh you see you have to use feeling always use feeling when it comes to body when you feel fresh and active stop 
it's not necessary to sweat it's you, you see the point you have to sweat and no it's not necessary to become tired no because because if you if, if you want to do if you want to do that kind of exercise it will make your muscles but it will not give you healthy there there's a difference so we want to become healthy so do exercise 10 minutes 5 minutes and you will feel fresh you see when you do exercise you will feel that your body is opening am i right your opening mind is becoming light and and as soon as you feel you becoming tired stop that's all and daily you can do i do daily and that it takes just 5 10 minutes and that's all and that much exercise you do and you'll be healthy that's that, that's the other things i want to tell you there's some other things but i'm going to end here maybe you can give practical advice when you are living in the temple so when do you put in your schedule the time oh uh, temp so temple yeah 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 so 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 temple exercise we do uh, what i do is before shingar arti i do just before shingar arti what i do is daily uh, shingar arti suppose 7:15 or 7 o'clock just before that 6:45 to 7 7 o'clock 7 to him i do my exercise and then start temple shingar the and because they'll grow the conscience you have to even stop it and then you go and then okay i just wanted to tell you one thing uh, before you all leave uh, i have some pen drives if you want to have a look this is got 400 hours of audios and also this health seminar i have put in this uh, i have given two three places health seminars so many things but by the way also it has whole bhagavad gita and chaitanya charitamrita i have explained by logically and this flash drive can go in your car people travel isn't it in what in your car and keep on hearing that's why i made this and uh, is my email you can contact me we can share many questions and answers so if anybody wants this flash drive you can have it from me now and there are books where is it i don't know and uh, yeah you can ask me i'll just can you give me just give me the books and just give me there are some books i have written if you want to have a look please have a look i i am a physician and a scientist so here is science fails to explain life about life about what scientists are speaking about life and what lies they are speaking about life and what truth they are speaking about life both and what's the vedic alternative about that prabhupad wanted life comes from life he wanted that uh, this is another book crazy ideas um there's so many questions you might be having about about so many religions so many god so many people speak about bible you are in, in uk you know what what does christianity speak about religion what does quran speak and why they are different what's the same principle everything i have written in this book in arguments and question answers form so uh, or well, yoga for health people say or so all these things you can have a look in this and this is one book for devotees mighty efforts uh if you want if you want to do devotion you have to apply discrimination power what is illusion and what is krishna but that's difficult to do how to understand that you need efforts you need intelligence you should also know whether can you just uh, you should also know whether you are advancing or not so what are the symptoms you are advancing in devotion or not i mean to say you can keep on doing devotion but you should know whether you are going in the right direction so all these things i have written in these books if you want to have a look please most welcome and right And thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Shri Prabhupada ki. Yeah.